Hi. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yes. So. Um, yeah. So, uh, wow, it's Tuesday morning. It is. But look. <laughs> yes. It's so cute back there. It is just darling. So I, I have to give props to Hayden because Hayden did all my hand sewing because you guys know I don't do that. So um, I did get some things attached via machine. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that my sewing machine would do, it did. But then he uh, came along and saved me. So it's um, so cute back there. There's some super cute. Um, wow, that's really heavy on that side of my shirt. <laughs> oh. Um, but yes, I think so too. It's yep, so cute. It is. So very excited. Um, I just have uh, to get the binding put on, but I wanted to get it up so you guys could all see. Yeah. So, so um, cute. Super, super excited. Yeah. Um, so today we're going to talk about basically finishing it up. Yes, so, we are. Um, so, everybody's. Um, if you're at this point, then you're at the end and um, you've done most of the hard stuff already. Yeah. So the embellishments really didn't take a ton of time um, and I did multiples um, in the hoop so the first piece which is what we're gonna actually stitch out was the only thing that I felt was like weird everything else really was pretty basic um, but not difficult um, and you could do um, more than one if you had a large enough hoop and mm -hmm. make sure that they're spaced out because you'll have you know excess felt um, that you won't want to right. chop, chop too close because you'll want that edge you know around the outside yeah yeah so, for sure um but definitely could do more than one in a hooping mm -hmm. and, and uh save a little bit on stabilizer so yeah yeah but they went pretty quickly and, and pretty straightforward some of them um just had you know felt and then boom we're live we're live <laughs> yay <laughs> Good thing the computer told us because I was really confused. Yes, right. Yes. Some days. <laughs> so um, obviously my kit has already been cut. So mm -hmm. what we're using is random stuff. So yes. we have felt. It is actual felt, but it's not the white felt that you will have. Um, and Sarah's marked the center of those pieces. So um, we will know where those are. And they are stacked in the order that we're going to use them in this project. this project, yes, this file. So if you are looking, um, this piece is on page seven zero in your book. And what we're doing is we are applying the Velcro to the back pieces. So um, your top pieces, the mug and, and the snowman and the bow and all of those, they're going to be attached with Velcro. Well, um, if you attach the Velcro afterwards, you're going to be sewing right through the top. So we need the Velcro put on before we put the backing on our decorative embellishments. So that is what this block does, and it has us do five of those. Again, not hard. It's just different. haven't done that before. So we thought since it was different, we would show it so you guys could see and ask questions if you had any. So I have a um, bright purple thread in. I would use white just so that it's not um, going to really pop out when you have your pieces laying around. It's going to be on the back, so it's not really going to matter. But at the same time, I wouldn't use bright purple. Yeah. But it will help you guys see. <laughs> but you will be able to see what we're doing what a little bit doing. easier if we have a stark difference on there. Um, we are also using some scraps of our um, Velcro, not the circle dots that you have in your kit. So the kit, of course, came with the pre-cut um, hook and loop mm -hmm. pieces. And there was two different sizes. Do make sure you're paying attention to which size goes where, um, because that will then match up with the piece that you put on in the original piece. Um, when you're making the blocks. Yep. So um, pay attention to that. So I just literally have snips of Velcro that we're going to put on so they won't look quite like yours. Mm -hmm. um, but just FYI. And we are using the soft part of the Velcro. Is that That's correct? what I grabbed. Yes. I honestly don't remember. <clears throat> Which I think um, makes sense because um, it's funny, uh, Miss Shirley over here, um, we were talking on the phone about uh, the pieces and the parts. And um, if you used the stiffer part of your Velcro, um, there's a really good chance that your pieces would stick together in your you bag. You know what? Um, I feel like they have you put the soft one on the quilt. So for that same reason. Yep. 
so that you don't have a bunch of stuff when you don't have anything on the quilt, mm -hmm. this is soft. So the rough piece does go on this. Um, and what I did in my bag is I put the pieces back to back. So I put the Velcros basically touching mm -hmm. when I stored them in the bag so that they weren't, um, you know, I wasn't putting a Velcro on, um, on the back, on the front of a different piece. Okay. So if I had these two pieces, mm -hmm. I put them back together and I literally put the Velcros together so yep. that when I was storing them, they aren't getting each other all yucky. Yeah. So I know if this was my quilt, I wouldn't do it that way. <laughs> I just followed the instructions. Um, I would do it op the opposite way um, because I think there it would be less likely for you to get stuff stuck on your quilt than it would be for your felt pieces to be stuck together if you weren't being super careful about how you put them together. Certainly less stress putting them together, mm -hmm. um, you know, and storing them. And of course, at some point, you're going to have a loose you know, they're not going to be paired in your bag right, so, right. as you're pulling them out, of course. Um, but that was how I, you know, I just followed the instructions in the book. And then I got to this part and went, okay, I guess these go here. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I got all these pieces and now they're all sticky. Yep. So that was my solution is I put them together. So if you have already stitched all of those other parts, then, and you followed the instructions like I did, mm -hmm. we're already here. So <laughs> um, depends upon where you're at. Yeah, but absolutely. Either way, you can make it work. It's just a matter of how you want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. All right, um, in the hoop, we have tearaway stabilizer and we are in our five by seven. Um, I don't need any special bobbin thread for this. So your standard embroidery bobbin will work just PG fine. And again, we have the basically five um, little circles with stars loaded design mm -hmm. and we're going to hit embroidery on the machine. Yes. Then we put the and then we do have to put oh, the foot down on this machine. It's man. It's like we're living back in the, I, it's back in the old ages. Right. Man, I, uh, struggle is real. <laughs> I made a couple blocks, um, trying to get the candy corn quilt finished mm -hmm. and brought back in because you know I'm expanding it. Yeah. So I made a couple of blocks for that and I'm putting the foot down. I'm like, I don't need to do that here. <laughs> it's funny the habits that you um... surely got not quite the right pieces in her kit. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, um, I mean, you certainly can send a message in. We don't carry Velcro here. So unfortunately, it's not something that we can just easily fix for you. You can send a message in to Kimberbell and maybe they can help you out with that. I don't know where they're at on those pieces. You know, they have all of that stuff done for them. So it's not like they have all of those mm -hmm. laying around either. So I'm honestly not sure. Um, yeah, I they might send her back here and yeah, have us get it um, for her. The stuff that we're using today, I don't even know where I got it. It's really crappy, <laughs> but it will do the job. And you certainly could, you know, I picked it up on clearance somewhere for less than two bucks. So, you know, you could cut pieces that you needed, um, yeah. like what we're doing today. I and have a couple of those. I doubt it really matters if they're square or circle. It won't. Um, you would just want them fairly mm -hmm. um, same size, of course, so that you don't have the the felt fuzzing up because that's what it does when the Velcro hits it yep. um, is fuzz. So you can see that we have um, circles. This bottom one is smaller than the top ones. So it, the needle is back up to that top left corner. And um, what we are going to do is take the top piece of felt and fold it. So I'm just gonna go right in front of this camera if that works for you guys. Um, if somebody's like, yeah, that doesn't work, just send me a message. Um, and what we're gonna do is fold that so that we have that center. That's the easiest um, so that we can see, we can double check so we know exactly where everything is. And we're going to put that point, let me try the other corner so you guys can see. So there's the dot, so I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And we're gonna put that center in there. Dun, dun, dun. And then we're going to open it up onto that piece. And our dot, you can also, if you've marked it like that, just double check. Or you can completely not do the fold and just stab it in there. doesn't have to be exact. I mean, let's get, this is just your backing piece. So it's not like, um, yep. this is a crazy, crazy um, piece. Once we have that, I believe we're going to tack it down first. Do, do, do. 
Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that I was counting stitches right. It's been a little while since I did this. <laughs> um, and so we're going to do a circle stitch first. And that is going to tell us where to put our Velcro. Find what you need. Shirley, I, uh, I'm going to stab in the dark that there is someone else out there that maybe has the opposite of what you have. At least there's one other person that's in your boat. <laughs> um, however, I have no idea if there's more than you two. <laughs> but I would bet that there's somebody out there that has, has your the other half. Yeah. So, um, again, this would be circle in your kit, and you would place the circle right over top of the circle that's now on there. Mine is just a snip off of the Velcro, so don't mind the squareness. Um, and once we have that, we're kind of covering up that. We're gonna then tack it down, and this is gonna do a star shape, which will keep it nice and secure from shifting. And that is attaching piece number one. Now you see that we have, um, all of that next one is really, really getting covered up, right? So what we're going to do is nice and gentle. We are going to pull, and I'm actually holding my Velcro because I don't want anything to tug. And we're going to just pull, and then I'm going the opposite direction so that I don't get a big tear. And I now have just that small hole you can see right there, <laughs> um, in there. So I now have a piece of Velcro that is secured to the back of, or the front of this piece that is going to then be the backing and I will already have my Velcro secured to it. So that is the top one. What I did at home is I literally now took a sticky note and I wrote whatever one this was, Advent um, Bow. And I put a sticky note with Advent Bow right on it and I set it aside did two things for me. One, it covered up my Velcro so nothing else stuck to the Velcro. Mm -hmm. And two, if they fell on the floor or they got mixed up, I knew which one went where, so I had the right size piece to go to the right project piece mm -hmm. later on. So I labeled these pieces after I stitched them, just for safety's sake, because um, my sewing room is a mess. So you just never know what's gonna get bumped and knocked over or, you know, Even when you're whatever. organized, you never know, so. So it never hurts to have that little bit of extra care. So the next one that we are going to do is the one that, lo and behold, the needle is sitting over top of. So it's crazy, right? If you have already marked the center, you literally can just double check and make sure that that is there, or you can do that same folding technique and open it to, make sure that it's on the center of that. So if that's the case, I'm just gonna rinse and repeat what we just did. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Double check, make sure that you're where you want to be. It's gonna tack it down. I don't know that we need to keep doing this, do you? Mm, probably not. All right, once you have the tack, the felt in place, you're gonna take your next piece. And again, um, make sure that you do have the correct sizes, cover up that stitch, and then do the star tack down. And then we will remove this one from the hoop. So again, um, it was just kind of a little different. I would highly recommend labeling your pieces as you pull them out of the hoop and you do want to pull them out of the hoop. Don't just fold them up. You're gonna end up with all kinds of stuff in the hoop and it, you don't want it to get in the way of your movement of your, um, of your needle. So with a um, hold on that Velcro just so that nothing's pulling out any of those stitches, tear that off, label it and set it aside and keep going. Yep, and you're gonna have tear away in the hoop um, which is what they suggested. This is just a stiff tear away. Yep. So um, this was, again, not difficult, just weird because it's not something that we've really done before. Right. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we were showing how that was going to be done. Um, you do want it in the center of the back. Don't put it up off to the side or anything because then your piece is gonna weeble wobble when you go to put it on the quilt. So make sure that they are in the center. And then when you go to place them in the pieces, you can actually see, okay, here's the center of my mm -hmm. tree, here's the center of my bird, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So you can place that exactly where you want that to be. Yep. So um, super simple, 
um, again, just a little bit different. So I wanted to show how that went so that you guys were okay with ripping your stabilizer in the middle of your project. Yes, it's totally Because it's always weird, right? Yes. So that yeah. is how that works. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? Again, not hard, just a little bit different. So, because um, we're going to just move to the next thing because watching more of the same thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense, no. I guess. Mm -mm. So This was pretty easy. All right, so that is how that works. And again, label. <laughs> yes. Okay, make sure that you take a little sticky note or something and mark that to make sure that you know which one goes where later on because once uh, you start getting piles of different pieces of felt, it gets a little confusing because you you're going to have a lot of white felt. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, which yeah. one goes where? There's a lot and they're all just slightly a different, different size. in size but they don't really look that different. So it does get a little confusing when you have that big stack of white pieces of felt. So make sure that you have the right ones in the right spot. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Um, Should we talk about borders next? I'm just trying to think if there's anything else from a embroidery standpoint on the embellishments. The only other. You've got the freestanding lace. Yep, the which little ornament. I used two layers of, I just did mesh on those. I didn't use um, Badge Master, not because I didn't want to, but because I couldn't find any. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that worked. Um, you do have velveteen on the bow, so um, you're going to have a little bit of a mess with that fuzzy mm -hmm. on the white felt, so a little bit of tape to make sure that you're getting all of that out of the way before you do your stitch because once those fuzzies get stitched in, they're really hard to get out, so mm -hmm. clean that up. They are all just Velcroed on? The, all, of, all of these pieces, these here mm -hmm. are sewn on. So do you want to um, show them your uh, some of your Velcroed ones on the other camera so they can see up close? I can do that. So here is the bow with um, the two-tone, so the the Velveteen is that top little bit, and then of course centering, oops, sorry, centering the Velcro in there. And then I, this one might be my favorite. He's, He's just so very cute. cute. Um, we've got the, um, the bird there, and of course we've got our littler piece of Velcro there. So um, there, that one's the smaller one. So he is very, very cute. And um, all of the threads I did put in there on mm -hmm. that list as well. If anybody is wondering, okay, what thread color was that? It is in that chart that I have. Um, and then when you go to put them on, you just line up your Velcros. Line up those Velcros. Um, so the Velcro here and the Velcro on the tree, um, you do need to sew on because they're over a seam. Mm. So they're not in a block that they could add it during the stitch out. Mm -hmm. So you'll be adding those pieces afterwards. Here's that tree. Um, and then you're gonna add the twine after so that it looks like you're tying it to your roof, which I actually think was a really cute little addition there. And all right, we're gonna do this once and only once because I can't handle it more than once. All right, we have the heart and you will have a pocket on the back of the heart and then um, there's the hand sewing by lovely Hayden. There's a little pocket, and what that does is it holds the music box. So that is the music. It's not terrible. It's not quite as tinny as the ice cream song. True. And it's not super long, which is good. Um, and then that hooks on, on those little tabs there. The other thing is your um, snowman here is just gonna go in the pocket. There's no Velcro on him. This one is the same basic things here, but they're right on the backing there. So these ones here are sewn in with the button and your bells hook on this up here. So they just go around and then set there. And Candy Cane just sits in the mug the um, marshmallows for number two. So you do get three um, three pieces. I personally didn't like the way that that looked um, because they looked dirty a little bit to me. Just 
again, this is a Lisa thing, so you can ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to um, use my Kimberbell palms and cut off palms from a strip of um, trim. I just brought this this morning, which is why they're not already on there, and add marshmallow palms instead of um, instead of chocolate in, favorite flavored um, instead of marshmallows. I don't know what. Maybe those are caramel flavored maybe. or something. Yeah. But um, I'm gonna go with a little bit whiter. Um, so you want to hit one of those yeah. just so they can see that what I was talking about. The color difference is definitely. Um, is there a glare? Pretty bad there, isn't there? Yeah. Maybe take it out. Yeah. Sorry. Hang on. So um, my buttons, these little tiny buttons that the ornaments are hooked on, unlike the Charlie Bound tree, um, it says you should have uh, like polka dot buttons and then solid red buttons. I had one red and everything else was polka dot. And um, Hayden was affronted by that. He's like, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> so I don't have a red button on there. Mine are all, he's like, they either have to match or you have to have more than one red. <laughs> so there you go. Now you can see the difference. So I just wanted mine to be a little whiter. So I'm going to use those guys. Um, Perfect. Just my, my silly little opinion. So um, take that for what it's worth. Okay. All right, so that is um, embellishments. I don't believe there was anything else really uh, confusing or um, difficult by any stretch of the imagination. There is um, pictures throughout the, the book and it will refer, you know, larger picture on page and so you can flip back to see a little mm -hmm. bit better image of where something was at. Um, I would say take your time cutting your pieces out because um, you really only get one shot at that. Yeah, you know, you do get that trim line mm -hmm. on all of them. So it's, it mm -hmm. is pretty straightforward. You don't have too much uh, stress. It's not like some of those other things where we had like something overhanging over, you know, that you mm -hmm. had to pull fabric out of the way. So it was just a pretty simple trim, but definitely take your time and, and get what you want the first time. Yeah. No doubt. Whenever you try to go back, sometimes that's, it, it doesn't, doesn't ever, ever look ever as really clean know. as, mm -mm. Um, but the felt gives a nice easy edge too. So yeah. it's a very forgiving edge mm -hmm. um, that doesn't uh, stretch out too much. So I, that's, like I said, the embellishments were not difficult. The only thing that I found weird was this first thing that we showed you, mm -hmm. just to make sure that you guys were comfortable with. Um, mm. Lois is in Maui. Well, hello Hi there. In Maui. <laughs> Good Lord, what time is it? That's earlier there, or later there. It's later there. For her sake, like I hope so. Six hours, I think. It's almost night. I think it's like six hours later there. Something like that. Yeah, getting there was fun. Coming home sucks. <laughs> <laughs> just stay there. No, just <laughs> That's what Jeff and I said when we went. Mm -hmm. We were like, if we ever go again, we're not coming home. <laughs> she just... says it's 427 AM. Oh, so the other way. Okay. Yeah. I can never remember. Which she's probably still on our time though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was nice of you to join us in the morning. Yeah. So early. I'm an early bird, but that's a little early for me too. Yeah, that I yeah. We we at that uh, point you might as well the, just the still day, be up. The day that we left we got up and went up um, Haleaka, Lea, I mm -hmm. can't remember, it's been too long now how to pronounce that, but we drove the mm -hmm. switch back to go up and watch the sunrise. Mm. Um, and it was totally worth it because I got to sleep in the plane, <laughs> but it was totally, it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Yeah. Colder than Sam Hill, <laughs> let me tell you, but it was absolutely <laughs> stunning. So if you get a chance, that's beautiful. All right. Absolutely beautiful. So um, we've done borders before. Right. So um, this, if you've already seen us do that, we don't have anything else special about these borders. No, this um, is just going to um, hopefully keep you from being confused if you um, are getting to that point and would like to know. Um, and someone always asks us, yes, if you have a bigger hoop, you can absolutely do more 
than one in a hoop. Yep. Um, for sure. So what I did was in a nine and a half by 14, mm -hmm. um, I did the 14 inch borders and I had two wide. So I was doing both pieces. Yep. Um, and I basically ran, I sewed my, I sewed three of the strips and three of the strips and then ran those two all the way down mm -hmm. and then cut those to fit after I had embroidered them. That's how I did that. So it was the easiest way to. Yep. All right. The so, pattern was going to get cut in the middle yeah. of it somewhere anyways. So absolutely. It's like, screw it. Let's just go for the easy route. I know they'll be in there. <laughs> um, 14 or seven. Nope. Not 14. Seven. Seven. It is. Mm -hmm. It's please wait a while. Wow. There it there is. There we go. Nope, that's not what I wanted to hit. I just wanted to move on the screen. There we go. That one? Yep. Doesn't like my hands. <laughs> it's funny when you get used to one thing, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. Doesn't pay because we're so used to one thing, we can't do another. All right, so we are working on the four and a half inch wide. Um, this is just the seven inch border, so um, you could work this in multiple different size hoops. There is also a 14 inch border option if you have our designs. So, um, the first things first is we need to know where to put the batting. Just like every other block, imagine that. Right. I mean, so, you might have your pieces pre-cut, Yep. Um, and that's um, okay. I just cut a chunk. Absolutely. Um, a lot of times I will cut, um, in this instance, a four-inch strip of batting and just right in there. Um, you can put a little bit of glue or something of, yep. and just shoop, and so it stays where you need it, um, and keep yourself from having to trim that. That would save some time. Um, in the big picture as you're, as you're going around. So um, we have that placement line that is telling us where to put the batting. And so we're going to completely cover that up. This portion anyways is just like a standard block. <laughs> How many times? And um, if you're doing the original border, uh, yours will be white. Um, if you got your kit from us, you might have a different border because we did give that as an option. Um, so I picked uh, blue trees uh, nice. to do the to this part. And that piece should be trimmed to four and a half. <laughs> and if you were working with Kimberbell files, your files will be the same. Uh, the steps are the, the same. same. The same steps, exactly. Um, these just happen to be the designs that uh, we did. Lisa and I did. Um, these are her ornaments. They're super cute. I made a jelly roll rug yesterday. Did you? Yes. Well, so, well why didn't you bring it to me? <laughs> <laughs> I, we decided we wanted to um, have a couple in the RV. In the RV. Right? And so it's been a while since I've made one. So um, I'm, I'm sewing it along and my dad is visiting and uh, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm making a rug. And so at this point I was like sewing the pieces with the batting inside. My dad's like, well, that's going to be a really skinny rug. I'm like, yes, dad, it's going to be a very skinny rug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is now going to show us where to place the um, fabric itself. So you probably have heard me say before, I a lot of times will skip this step mm -hmm. when I'm doing a square. Don't skip this step here. In a border, you need to know exactly where that's going to be. Because you so, don't have any extra, unless you, you didn't cut your pieces. Um, which I don't recommend either, so do this step. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
They still gone? Yeah, till Saturday. Get farther under the desk. That'll help. <laughs> All right. Just it drop. always makes you feel better, right? <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Just dropped my phone. All right. Um, so, couple things. This has obviously just been cut right off the bolt. I would press this. Yes. And starch this. Yes. Before you cut this. Yes. Before you put it in here. Yes. So, um, do as we say, not as we do. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you can see. Um, there is a line to the outside here. There is not a line off the top there. So what we are doing here, because it's a border, we are trying to keep the batting out of the seam allowance. So this is built this way so that we can connect one to the next. And if we had a piece of batting here, then it would be in the seam and we don't want that. Yeah, it would get bulky. So what we're going to do is we're going to go past that. In your instructions, it's going to recommend that you go at least a quarter. Um, I've got salvage up here. So if I have salvage, I don't, I either usually would cut it off before right. I've even gotten here. But I go that it generally just a hair over a quarter inch just to make sure that I've got plenty after it's pulled in if it did. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I've got plenty up there. So, um, Make sure that you are up and over the top with enough to cover your seam allowance because you're going to want to have that quarter inch to sew it into the next piece. Mm -hmm. And um, next piece being the quilt, not the border. Yes. Sorry, that probably was a little confusing. And then, I know, I taped that one down. So. Depending upon how comfortable you are, um, how tightly you cut this, if it's like just barely at that four and a half and you can really see the stitch lines, you're going to want to make sure that this is taped so there's no shifting as we are moving forward. If it's pretty good, I don't usually tape this section. I'm just holding it while mm -hmm. it's tacking it in place. But that's up to you. So if you are especially... Um, Stingy is not the right word. <laughs> <laughs> Frugal. Frugal. That's a good word. Frugal on your trimming and you have almost nothing overlapping that side stitch. You don't want that to shift at all because you want to make sure that everything's going to catch. So go ahead and tape that in place down here. So we've got tape at the top and tape at the bottom if you need the tape at the bottom. Got anything to add to that? Nope. All right. I'm still in purple thread, so it's going to look not matched at all fyi and what we're going to do now is tack these side pieces down they are outside of our batting but inside of but the seam inside allowance. of the seam allowance so you do not need to remove them you can leave them right where they are they are literally going to just get sewn into that seam allowance um, but what it does is it keeps your fabric from shifting as the quilting is happening so there's no draw in yep helps. as that's quilting is being done. So once one side is doing, I generally do kind of pet my fabric a little <laughs> bit just to keep and make sure that it stays nice and smooth as it tacks the second side down. Once we have that, then we do the quilting itself. How about we put white in there? Um, it might be more noticeable <laughs> than... I'm so sorry, pardon me. Do you have a white over there? Is there a white in our, or a light-ish? Um, I thought there was a white. Yeah. It's my white. <laughs> but there's a white in there. Oh, there's a... Get it. Oh, oh! Oh, oh white is probably on me now. Nope. Nope, okay. I got him. Thank you. <laughs> so glad I can help. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Good morning. At least you're not Tucker. Right? <laughs> She'd have gone running screaming. <laughs> Though I, so we, there was a teeny tiny little spider we just found. Um, 
So uh, we just changed to white because it'll be a little bit more noticeable on here. Um, if you didn't want your quilting to show, uh, navy blue or something like that would be perfectly fine. Um, you can kind of pick and choose. Um, but we did want you to <coughs> sort of be able to see what we were quilting on here. Um, yeah, when I when I see those like Facebook posts where they're like, um, there's a spider just burned the house down. I kind of have that reaction if it's a big spider. That one wasn't too bad. He was not when big. they're red. For some reason, I can't handle red. <laughs> I I just there's like that red seat just screams like bad to me when it when I see them. They can be like minuscule, but if they're red, I'm like oh <laughs> for that. Um, but outside of that. Um, they got to be really big. They, they got to be big before I'm going to really have an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but, and and I will very often, you know, try to scoop them and throw them out, outside. Mm -hmm. for, mostly because I just don't want to deal with the gut. Gut, yeah. That's... Okay, I mean, it's not because I'm trying to save the spider world. It's because I don't want to deal with the gut. Yeah, it is definitely less messy. But there was a uh, incident at my old house. One fell out of one of like the fluorescent lights. Mm -hmm. It must have been where it was. I don't know where else it yeah. could have been and on my shoulder as in the kitchen and I'm doing whatever with the kids and I look down and it's on me. I did the girly screaming <laughs> dance like you would not believe. And I, <laughs> yeah. no exaggeration. It was one of those, I think they call them wolf spiders. Mm, yeah. So not yeah. dangerous or no. any, you know, but it was about that big mm -hmm. and it was on me. <laughs> Is that enough said? That's totally enough, yes. <laughs> So we went down one side, that's this pattern in particular, um, and then it's going to jump and go back up the other so that the um, ornaments are going in both directions. Um, and then uh, then we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. So it's a pretty quick stitch. They're not uh, super stitch intensive. There is um, sashing borders as well, uh, and they're going to be done exactly the same way. Essentially, all of the borders whether you're purchasing them from Kimberbell or for us, are basically done the same way. Um, yes. The, I haven't done a Kimberbell border in a long time. Do they have the little basting stitch on the side as well? Okay. Yep. So then, yes, they would be exactly. Yeah, I, I didn't reinvent the wheel. The same on way. This, this is <laughs> basically. Um, I mean, it's my design. Yeah. But the uh, steps to create it are the same type of. It's there's not a difference there. <clears throat> This one's the most stitch intensive of them all. But it was so cute, cute. I had to do it. I haven't decided which one's my favorite though. I think I like the next one the best. The, I, I like the I round I think the swirly. round with the swirls and are the, probably my favorite. I think the star would be my second because it's really cute. I like it because it looks like it's radiating out from the center. That was my plan. Yeah, that's what exactly what it looks like. <laughs> so these are um, the ornaments are designed for the outside, so the white outer border. Um, and then, like she said, there is um, a separate for the inner border. Um, that one says cup of cheer, mm -hmm. and it's so done the cute. exact same way um, for that. I think that one actually has you cutting for mm -hmm. uh, having cut the pieces or so how it's sewn yes, together. It yeah. has so that one I did still in that same hoop, but I did four, four at the same time um, yeah. at the same time in the in that hoop. So okay, I got a lot done in a quicker time. Yes, because I was able to do four because they were much more narrow. All right, All right so here's the hard part, right? Not hard. No, but just different. <laughs> just um, different. So you want to go to the other camera to do the yeah. connection? All right. Um, well, first off, we've got to um, take this out. So I'm going to just save these pieces of tape because I'm going to need them again anyway. Right. So. Okay. All right. So let's get rid of some of this other things. All right. So here we have the piece. We don't need any anything from this hooping. And what I generally do is I get my second hoop set up. So I put the no-show mesh, which is all we have. And I put that in the hoop. 
not on a flat surface at all. All right. And then I generally go ahead and put that back in the machine and stitch while I'm doing this section. So um, I would go ahead and hit. Yep, I'm gonna just put that purple in again so they'll be able to see your um, All right, lines. so here we have, um, I've got my excess. We are not cutting this piece of fabric. We're not cutting any fabric, but do not cut the fabric. We are only trimming at the stabilizer. You can use a rotary um, is what I prefer to do. So I actually, um, you can use like the smaller ones. It's a little bit easier for management purposes. Um, but what we're gonna do is trim right at the edge of the batting. Um, I don't have a rotary over here, so I'm going to uh, just keep going here with my scissors. All right, once you have that end, you're going to pull back and trim the batting or at the batting here. So we don't need even stabilizer. I mean, you can have it there if you would like, um, but you don't really need it at this end either. So it's easiest if you just get in the habit of trimming right on that batting line, but you are not, I repeat, not cutting any fabric. Okay, stabilizer only. Once you have the top and the bottom removed, we are trimming right along that fabric edge. Again, this is one of those things that you can do with your rotary, put a ruler there and just shoop and you're done. Um, it's what I generally would do, but again, I don't have one over here, so here we go. Um, I can't get a hold of it. <laughs> and the other side. Again, we are not cutting the fabric. I'm like a broken record, aren't I? It's good to say the same thing sometimes. Take seven, that's what they say. So when I originally placed this fabric, I could not see that stitch line, but after the stitching, it's pulled in just enough I can see where that is. So now I have, I'm gonna show you the back so you guys can see, batting only under where we stitched, all right? And that is exactly what we want. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this piece and place it in to the next hooping, but I need to get batting in there first. So if you wanna switch for me, we've got the placement line because why not let your machine go to work while you are, right? So now we're going to cover that up. They're so close, am I back there? Yeah. pretty tight. <laughs> I think it'll work. Um, so we of course need batting just like before. Don't want any puckers or anything. I always smooth out as I stitch just to make sure. Ooh, look how tight that is. <laughs> Right, once this is tacked down, then we need to remove the excess because we, of course, don't want that in our seam. So just like we did before, we're gonna remove the batting from all four sides. Yes, I know I lifted the lever, thank you. Do you wanna do um, the placement on the other camera? Um, yes, Okay. I do. Probably easier for them to see. Yep, I'm just getting rid of that. All right, I'm gonna pop over here. So I need to get rid of all four sides and that includes the top and the bottom, which do not, um, oh yeah, I got one more stitch I gotta do. I don't know where to put anything yet. Um, don't have much to remove up at the top, but there's something there. All right. So again, just the batting there, we're going to do the fabric placement line. 
This one's a little bit more important than the last one because we need to know exactly where to place our previously stitched piece. There's a lot of thread in that by the time you actually get all said and done. And there is her fabric placement line. So she's gonna take it and- um, Run with it. Run with it, yep. Don't run too far though. Aw, you're no fun. <laughs> All right, so again, you can see that there is no fabric supposed to be um, up at the top and the bottom, and that's because, thank you, mm -hmm. I, um, I'm gonna put fabric there. It's just uh, not going to stitch anywhere there. So here's where I had stitched before, and so I'm gonna continue down. So what I generally will do is I'll lay that out roughly like it's supposed to be, and then I throw all my excess up at the top so that I'm going the right direction. And I fold it so I can see that batting line here. And what I will do is place that so that my fabric edges line up with the fabric line. Is that better? Mm -hmm. All right, so my fabric edges are gonna line up with that fabric line and I really wanna butt that batting up to the previous. If you get here and you're like, wow, I really did a crappy job trimming something there and you've got a big bump or something, go ahead and remove, because you really want to be right at that line. So if you've got something that you're like, yeah, that shouldn't be there, you can get rid of it, all right? Don't be afraid to do that, because you really want that to be right up to it. Once you have where that needs to be, you're gonna take and I'm holding this with my, I'm right-handed, so I would imagine if I was left-handed, I'd do it backwards, but maybe not. Um, I'm gonna grab this one and pull it back while holding that in place. And then I'm gonna switch. So I don't want that to move. And then I'm gonna just take one of those pieces of tape. You can have multiple small pieces and do the sides, whatever it is that works best for you. Once you have that taped down, I still go back and double check and make sure I didn't shift while I was moving all of that around. And then I pull this down again. And we're going to do that same tack down. And again, if you feel like um, you're good, you can leave that untaped. If you feel like, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, really tight and I don't feel like I've got much wiggle room there, then you can go ahead and tape the bottom. So again, Really, really um, concentrate on making sure that this is exactly where you need it to be. If you're a hair off, be a hair off too far up, not overlapping, because mm -hmm. you don't want a bump of stabilizer um, and batting in there. So if anything, you need to have an empty gap, don't have a bump of extra stuff. Yes. Um, so if you have to err on one side or the other, push it up just a hair more. You do not want it to pull down into the batting. Okay. And most of the boarding border designs, they don't, um, they're not meeting anyways. So there's going to be right. a, a there's slight gonna be gap. A gap. So it's, yep. it shouldn't You've be. You've got some wiggle room in general. Yeah. Yep. All right, so we're gonna go back to the machine. Your excess unstitched piece should be literally hanging over the front of your cabinet and the parts that you have already embroidered on should be going over the back of your machine. So as you are stitching, it's going to um, obviously trade sides. The back is gonna get longer, the front is gonna get shorter until eventually you have that all there. Um, what I tend to do is, for example, on this size quilt and doing those two runs, those pieces are very long, so they get really, really heavy, and I don't want it to pull on my hoop. So what I did is folded the piece, put a pin in it or a clip to keep it, and then I just set it on my table behind it so that it had plenty of slack to move, but wasn't weighing on the back of my hoop. So once you get a really long piece, mm -hmm. don't let it pull on the hoop. Make sure, unless you have a cabinet all out there and that's not an issue, but if you have it where it's gonna drop down, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> pay attention and make sure that it's 
Mm -hmm. And pay attention to make sure it doesn't... You're not getting stitched into it, too. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah sliding Absolutely. underneath your hoop is yep. also a, a thing. We do not want that either. Mm -mm. Either one would be bad. All right, so we're going to attach this to keep it in position. It's going to go up the right side and then back down on the left. If you feel at this point as it's tacking things down, you're like, wow, I did a really bad job. These are basting stitches, so they will come out um, pretty evenly. Unless it's super, super far off, like it totally missed one side, it's probably going to be just fine. You will not notice it because these edges are going to be um, in your seam allowance. You're not going to see it. So um, this is not like an edge to edge quilting type thing where you're trying to literally meet up with something else. So you have some wiggle room and some room for error. Mm -hmm. So once you have that tacked in place, you are going to go ahead and stitch the next quilting pattern, which will just extend that quilt pattern throughout your border. And we're gonna just keep doing that over and over. I couldn't tell you how many I did, I'm, I lost track. I, I was doing it in between random things. Yeah. So it actually took me a couple of days, <laughs> not because it took that long, but because I just didn't get to it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did the, a little bit here and a little bit there. So I'm sorry, I don't know how many hoopings I lost track, mm -hmm. so. Um, um, so while this is stitching, can you think of, um, is there any tips for trimming up their blocks that they might need to know about? Anything weird uh, that you came across that was difficult? I know you use your orange pop rulers. I used orange pop rulers for some things, some other ones, um, specifically those orange pops when you have like the zippers and stuff like that so that your ruler can sit nice and flat, super, super helpful. Um, watch the ribbons when you attach those ribbons in your trimming it's they're very long um, i know there was a lot of discussion about i don't have enough ribbon mm -hmm. um, don't stress about not having enough ribbon you have plenty um, plenty <laughs> so um, even to the point of making sure that you're tying them and kind of wrapping them and taping them down so that you're not cutting them or sewing them into the seam when oh, yeah, you did things, that once, right? I had just a tiny little tip, and I was like, oh, crud. <laughs> um, you can't tell, fortunately. It was literally just the tiniest little edge that got caught. Um, but, yeah, it was frustrating. Yeah, it's easy like, to do that. Um, but uh, just make sure that you have that, you know, all taped and conglomerated into the center um, of the that particular square. Um, like I said, there's a lot of steps to a lot of these, but it wasn't hard. It just was a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but I didn't really find anything particularly hard. Um, even the multi-hooping pieces all line up fine. Yeah. Um, there's very, you know, even like the wreaths and things, um, because you have leaves that are getting oh, sewn. Yeah, it doesn't You're covering really up your cross section points that it, even if you're a hair off or something there, it doesn't matter um, because it's not going to show. Right. So. Um, Someone asked a question about the red house and lining up. They said, oh, your um, your stripes line up perfectly. So was there any tips? And I said, actually, they don't line up, uh -uh. but it's just not noticeable no. um, in the big picture. So don't stress about it nope. um, at all. No, my right side is almost perfect, but my left side is way off. I'm not really sure how that worked. Yes. <laughs> A lot more quilting and drawing in on the yeah. bottom than there was on the top, evidently, because the right side looks really good. And then you get over to the left and you're like, huh. But it's not noticeable. Like, no. I really had to go over there and, and look, look at, at it, it to, go, to hmm. see that it wasn't. Um, no. So, yeah, just uh, just do it. Yeah, it's not. And then, um, you know, those two are go, go together, but doesn't mm -hmm. matter again because there's nothing specifically right um the only thing that i really took a lot of time on was um using wonder clips on where this when i was sewing it together so that my seams met mm -hmm. with as much possible perfection as i could get there so yeah. you know because i you don't want to do all of this and then have your right your pieces way off you know if it's not a hundred percent as long as i'm 99 percent, i was okay with close perfection <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to not be 100% perfect it all is, the time. Absolutely. But, um, I honestly, what I would have found to be the hardest part was the hand sewing. So, <laughs> yeah, I passed that off. <laughs> so, um, but, but I think um, that covers everything. Yeah. 
um, I'm just tickled pink mm -hmm. with how it all turned out. And uh, Hayden did find a mistake. Mm. Those two blocks are switched. My snowflake is supposed to be on the left and the snowflake fabric is supposed to be on the right. Ah. Because my heart is covering up my snowflake and it's not supposed to be. I see. Yes. I decided you... it wasn't worth unsewing. Hadn't mentioned that. Um... No, but if you look at, don't do what I did. Do what the book says. Yeah. It must have been when I walked over to the sewing machine. I, yeah. I flipped them flipped and them. didn't realize it. I didn't realize it all, but it, and he didn't realize it till he went to sew on the hooks and he went, am I really supposed to put these hooks on the, the sewing, snow, yeah. on the snowflake? And I was like, oh, he was like, well, what do you want me to do? I'm like, just put them on there. <laughs> it's all good. I thought about it for half a second and I was like, it's, it's all good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, very, very happy with it. Uh, it's absolutely adorable. We did really, we did some really cute um, quilting Our designs. Our quilting designs yes. came out. Good job. Nice job. <laughs> I, uh, I was looking and Karen was asking me about the quilting patterns last night. Are these all yours? And I was like, yeah, I didn't use your cups. There oh. was only one vertical four by six. And I'm like, oh my gosh, her cups are nowhere on here. <laughs> I feel like I need to go make one. Just throw it up there. So I, put it I was like, huh? But there was only that one. Mm -hmm. vertical four by four and I guess I just assumed I'd have another one somewhere and never got there yeah so uh I I, I gotta I'm gonna have to stitch something and throw it on there <laughs> but it also was a lot of fun to, to create the designs for um and uh yeah it, it's it's super duper cute um it's definitely on my list to do um yeah yeah I don't know when it'll get done, but it's definitely, and I, I really don't know if I'll do mine. Like I know, um, I've seen a lot of people talking about the numbers and whether or not they wanted the advent and what did you do? Um, your sneaky little secret. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you decided you didn't I want. I decided that since I was doing the store sample, I really needed to put the numbers on it. But in the two years later or whatever, when I take it home, I probably don't want the numbers on it. Mm -hmm. I will leave all of the things on all of the time yeah. for display when I have it out. So I used water soluble bobbin when I was putting the numbers on. So yeah. I can just, they'll, they'll go away later. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I have this spot next to my fireplace that I think would look really cute with this in, but I think it's just a little bit too big. So I might have to like pick some of my favorite blocks to put in um, and. Uh, that would be very hard. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because as I was making them, you know, I was like, okay, I have to, you, but you don't need three stars. You don't need three gifts. You don't, right. you know, right. pick one or two houses instead of three, three. or whatever, right. you know, kind of thing. You could certainly go that route and uh, less filler blocks would mm -hmm. <laughs> push you a long way to shrinking. Exactly. Um, no doubt. So, but, but it's big, it is very cute. It turned out very, very good. And, um, I'm super happy. The colors blend very well. So I'm happy with all of the color choices. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Yeah. Yay. Yay. So um, we do have some uh, stuff on our website. Um, so if anybody would like any of the information that we have talked about, um, last week we talked about the filler block um, quilting designs. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are free. Um, they're really just basically boxes that are kind of like the border here, um, except for those you're going to base down the edges so that in. the fabric won't shift. Yes, like um, it is want to do when you're doing quilting. Yeah. So um, just to help with that, draw in a little bit and hold your fabric in, so you don't necessarily have to put as much tape on if you don't want to. Um, and then you have um, a file on there for uh, that has the colors that we used, right? I think so. I will yep. double check. I know I talked about it. <laughs> Honestly, don't remember. I know I've sent it to a lot of people. I, yeah. I'm literally drawing a blank whether it's been posted or not. But if it's not, I'll make sure it gets on there. Yep. So, um, yeah, I think that wraps up our cup of that cheer. That is cup of cheer. So, um, haven't seen any questions in the last little bit. So, I'm guessing you guys have run out of questions. Um, but we do still have kits available. We are still waiting on the white graffiti border, which is what you see on this one. Mm -hmm. But we do have many other prints that you could put in its place. So we would be more than happy to substitute something in or make note that we owe that to you whenever uh, it does get here. Yep. 
So whichever way you would like to go, we're happy to um, get you stitching. So Yeah, so um, uh, it says that we're probably sold out of kits online, um, but that is because we're waiting for that white we're border. we're waiting for that. Um, just drop us a quick email and uh, we can send you cool. over an invoice for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, or if you want a substitute for your border piece, send that over in the email as well. And we'll just and, get you all um, in one shot. we'll get you all squared away. You Absolutely. can, of course, call us on the telephone as well. Um, we'll be happy to help you. But our website is down at the bottom. And um, I think that is it. We'll be online later on this afternoon with our normal Tuesdays. Yep. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about our new block of the month coming up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what else. Mm -hmm. It's a surprise. Just a surprise to, for to us, us as much as to you. Yes. So uh, <laughs> we will see you guys later, maybe this afternoon. Thanks for stopping in and spending a little bit of time with us and uh, have a cup of cheer. Bye. Bye.